Okay, so in this video we are going to be continuing on with the doubly linked list series and the goal of this video is to fill in the logic for the following function which is called remove duplicates and as it says it's given a doubly linked list and all of the duplicate entries that is nodes with entries that are the same will be removed from the list with the exception of the first occurrence of that node. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example. I've created a doubly linked list object here, and then I filled it in with a bunch of data. So let's go through the list one by one, and then we'll kind of go through that process, and I think going through the process will be make it kind of clear as to what the goal of remove duplicates is supposed to be all about. So we start off on the front of the list, the head node, that's this eight here. So this is the first time we're encountering an eight, so we haven't seen it before, so we move on. Now we see a four, again, we haven't seen that before, so we move on. So we see a second four. So this is the second four we've seen. We already have one, so we're going to go ahead and remove this from the list. So we see a six. We haven't seen that number before. Again, we stumble on a four, so we've already seen that one before. It's already present in our list, so we want to remove it. Uh, again, we've seen an eight. That was the start of our list, so we remove that. See another four, so we get rid of that. Haven't seen a 10 before. We haven't seen a 12 before. The last 12 we have seen. Uh, a 12 before, so we'll get rid of that final 12. So given the initial list that we had with all the data elements there, the removed duplicates list at the end of the day should be something that looks like this for that example that we just went over. So we want to write in a function that's going to traverse a doubly linked list in this way and remove duplicate entries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those entries back so we can actually get rid of those through the function that we're going to be writing. So I've already went ahead and called the remove duplicates function as well. Of course, right now it doesn't do anything. And then this print function will print out the resulting, hopefully, uh, removed duplicates list. So let's go ahead and go up to this function here and start coding in the logic for how this function is going to behave. So the way that we're going to do this is pretty similar to what we just went through with the example. Namely, we start off on the head node and we keep moving along all the while keeping a running tally in some way of whether or not we've encountered some list element, some element that's already present in the doubly linked list. And that way we're going to keep track of those things is going to be through a hash table or in Python a dictionary. So we're going to, if we encounter an element every time we encounter one, so we encounter eight, what we do is we'll hash the value of eight, we'll hash the value uh, there and put a value of one to indicate that we've seen one occurrence of the value eight. And every time we encounter another node, we'll console our hash table to see if we've encountered that before, if there's a value of one there. If not, we'll add it to the hash table and move along. Otherwise, we'll remove it from the list. So we encounter eight, it's not present in the hash table, so we add it. Four, first time we've seen it, we keep moving. The second four we see, we consult the hash table and we see that we've already seen it. There's already a value of one at that location. So what we do is we delete that, that node consisting of four. So that's kind of the general idea as to how this remove duplicates function is going to work. So let's go ahead and start writing. So we're going to start off by writing a pointer, which we'll call current. This will initially be equal to the head of the list. Again, it's kind of similar to how we were traversing the list when we were going through the example. Uh, just you know, in the beginning of the video. So then we're going to create a dictionary or a hash table, which we'll call scene. So we'll set that equal to DICT, which is a dictionary object in Python. And then what we're going to do is we're going to traverse through the list. We're going to do that by moving the current pointer from node to node to node until we get to null. So we'll say while current is not none, so essentially while current, we'll keep moving through the list. So there's two things that we can encounter in this way. So if current.data is not in the hash table. So if it's not in scene, we want to put it there. So what we'll do is we'll say scene of the entry current.data. So basically what we're doing is we're saying in this hash table, create an entry of current.data. So for instance, create an entry of eight. And then at that location, go ahead and put a one there to indicate that we've seen it. And then go ahead and move on to the next node in the list. So we'll say current is equal to current.next. That's all we need to do there. So now the else condition is when we have actually stumbled upon a data element that is already in our hash table. So else, what we'll do here is we want to remove that node. So one thing we want to do is we can make use of our delete function from before in a previous video. So what we're going to be able to say there is we're going to say self.delete node, and then we're going to give it the node that we want to delete. And 
but we're going to have to tweak the delete function that we wrote in a previous video because the delete function that we wrote was given a key. So we searched the doubly linked list for a given key. And once we stumbled upon that key, we deleted the node that had that key present. So we can tweak the delete function that we have to delete the node as we can specify a node instead of specifying the key. So we're going to go ahead and tweak that delete function and we're going to call it delete node so that way we can delete a specified node. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here and copy this delete function, which again we from a previous video. I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to go down here and paste it right below. So I'm going to call this function delete node and really only it just requires a few different changes. So the first change is that it's not going to take a key, it's going to take a node. And then there's really two main changes that we need to check here. So basically, we're not looking for the data anymore. We're not checking if that's equal to the key. We really want to care about if the current node that we're on is equal to the node that we care about. And there's only one other location where that actually happens, which is right here in this else if. So instead of checking if the data is equal to the key, again, we just check if the current node is equal to the node that is passed into the function. So those changes will be enough to get us to a point of deleting a specified node. So let's go back down to the remove duplicates function. So we can make use of this delete node. We can pass it the node that we want to delete, and then we'll, we'll do that. But we're not quite done in this else, else statement yet. So what we want to do first is we're going to create a pointer to current.next. So we're going to say nxt is equal to current.next. And the reason that we're going to do that is because we want to delete this Thing here. So we're actually calling delete node on current. But in order for us to progress through the list, we want to say something similar to what we have up here, where we say current is equal to current.next. Well, if we try to run that line after we delete the node, it's not going to be able to go to the right node because we've just deleted that node. So it's not going to be able to run current is equal to current.next. And that's the reason that we store this pointer up here to current.next before we delete current. So this will allow us to say current is equal to nxt instead of just current is equal to current.next for the reason that we just went over. Right, so let's go ahead and make sure that it actually performs as expected. So if we go ahead and run the remove duplicates function and then print the resulting list on this linked list that we have here, this doubly linked list, we should see 8, 4, 6, 10, and 12 as those are the unique elements as we encounter them in the doubly linked list. So if we go ahead and save this and give it a run, Indeed, we see the resulting doubly linked list without duplicates is 8, 4, 6, 10, and 12. So that seemed to do the trick. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them below in the comment section. As always, the code for all of these videos is provided on my GitHub, and the link to this video is provided in the description of this video. Thanks again for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.